Hey everyone, my name is Daniel, and in this video, we're gonna look at adding AI prompts to Power Apps Canvas apps. And this can be done for either new apps or your existing Canvas apps. So the first thing I'll walk you through is how to build these two AI prompts. One is called Sentiment, and the other one is Respond. Next, I'll show you how to go ahead and use those prompts in my existing Power Apps Canvas app called Ticket Systems such that if somebody went ahead and put in a distress type of a ticket with a title of this kind and a description of this kind, the AI will immediately take effect and provide a response to the user while the ticket is being submitted, giving the person a sense of assurance that the ticket will be escalated to a critical status to expedite the solution. So stick around because this video will truly help take your apps to the next level using AI prompts. But first, here's my intro video. So let's get started. Here I am in Power Apps, and this is the Canvas app that I'm going to go ahead and enhance. By enhance, I mean actually add the AI prompts to it. So I'm gonna go back to my Power Apps, and I'm gonna click on More, and in my More, I'll go ahead and select the AI Hubs. In fact, if I just go and click on this pin, you will always see the AI Hub function over there. So when I click on it, this is where we're gonna go and click on my AI prompts. And as you can see, I don't have any right now. However, I'm gonna go and leverage this AI prompt feature. Also, you can always go to the sample solution gallery whose link I have put in the description below. And when you come and do a search called prompt in this keyword over here, you will start to see all of these prompts that are already available. And it's pretty neat because you can go ahead and select on any one of these. It would click on the go to GitHub and actually copy the prompt from here and then go to your AI hub and paste it in your AI prompts. It's literally that simple. So I'm gonna walk you through creating two of these. So I'm gonna click on the AI prompts and the first one I'm gonna use is sentiment analysis of a text. So I'll go ahead and just change this name to sentiment and everything else I can leave it as is because this is exactly what I wanna do is first of all, when the ticket comes in, I wanna assess to see is the person distressed and this sentiment analysis AI prompt will do that for me. So I like everything over here. It's already got my input text. Everything in the prompt is good as is because it's a good template. So I'll go and click on now save custom prompt. And you have to wait for this thing to finish. So once it's done saving, you'll get this nice green check over here. It says your custom prompt has been saved. You can access it from the models page or use it in an app and a flow. We'll be using it in an app. All right, so I'll go and click on X out of over here. And there you go. Here is our first prompt. So if the sentiment detects that there is something negative, then I want to go ahead and respond back to it. And for that, if I scroll a little bit to the right, you will see respond to a complaint. There is already part of the template. So I'll go and select that. First of all, this one, I'm gonna call that as a response because that's literally what we'll be using it for, a response. Everything else looks good. I'll go and click on save custom prompt. We just gotta wait for this thing to finish and for that nice green check mark to appear over there. There you go. It says your custom prompt has been saved. You can access it from the models page or use in the app or flow. All right, cool. I'll go and click on the X over here and we can see both of them. The sentiment was the first one we created and there's the response. So successfully, the two prompts have been created. Now let's go into our Canvas app and actually apply these two prompts. So here we are in our Canvas app studio and the first thing I need to do is go ahead and make connection to the two prompts that we created. Uh, so I'll go ahead and click on the data, click on the add data, and then you can do it both ways. You can actually do a search for it or under these AI models, you can actually go ahead and find them. So if I go and now click on see all models, uh, the two that we need to see is one is for the sentiment and the other one is response. But make sure you don't get confused because see this one says sentiment analysis. However, we wanna use the custom prompts, the ones that we created. So therefore see that sentiment, it is of a type custom prompt. So that's the first one we want. So I'm gonna go and click on it and now it will load and your data connection is created. Let's go and get the second one too, which is actually of type response. So I'll go back to our AI models. I'll go and see all models. Uh, and since it is response starting with R, I bet you it's a little bit in the bottom. So if I keep scrolling down, there you go. It's a response of custom prompt. Go ahead and click on it. It is loading and there you go. We've got the sentiment and the response. Both of them are custom prompts. And just so that you know, it's the exact same one, the sentiment one and the response, the AI prompts that we made. 
So this was the first and the most important thing. The two prompts that we created, we've gone ahead and now made the data connection to it in our Canvas app. So now let's go ahead and manipulate the app a little bit. All right, so I'm gonna go back into my tree section over here. And in this, specifically this form section, in this container, right, over, right now, all this container has is the form. I wanna go and put in a label below it because that's what the text that is generated by the AI prompt should be displayed over here. So right over here with the main container selected, this is the container. I'm gonna go and click on insert and I'll go and click on text label. I just gotta make sure it shows up over here. Perfect. Uh, let me go ahead and now completely expand it. So it's expanded, but I need a little bit more real estate. So here I'm gonna make sure I select on that label and this flexible height, I'm gonna go and turn it on. Now it automatically goes and fills up some pretty good space that I like, so I don't have to tweak any more of it. However, if for some reason your form is a little bit more big, you can go ahead and manipulate these fill portions. But I actually like the amount of text that I'm seeing over here, uh, so I'll leave it as is. Um, I'll go ahead and tweak the text size a little bit. It's at 13 right now. I may have to bump that up to about a 15, but all in all, I'm pretty happy with what it is. So now let's go and start using the power effects functions to start leveraging the prompt. All right, so I'm gonna go back into my tree section over here and in this, specifically this form section, in this container, right, over, right now, all this container has is the form. I wanna go and put in a label below it because that's what the text that is generated by the AI prompt should be displayed over here. So right over here with the main container selected, this is the container. I'm gonna go and click on insert and I'll go and click on text label. I just gotta make sure it shows up over here, perfect. Uh, let me go ahead and now completely expand it. So it's expanded, but I need a little bit more real estate. So here I'm gonna make sure I select on that label and this flexible height, I'm gonna go and turn it on. Now it automatically goes and fills up some pretty good space that I like, so I don't have to tweak any more of it. However, if for some reason your form is a little bit more big, you can go ahead and manipulate these fill portions. But I actually like the amount of text that I'm seeing over here, uh, so I'll leave it as is. Um, I'll go ahead and tweak the text size a little bit. It's at 13 right now. I may have to bump that up to about a 15, but all in all, I'm pretty happy with what it is. So now let's go and start using the power effects functions to start leveraging the prompt. So the primary field that we want to focus on is in this description because the prompt will utilize every text that is put in over here, the description that is typed in. So in this card, specifically this card value for description, that's the one that I want to focus on. And over there, go to the on change property. First one that I'm going to do is I'm going to go and say set, I'm going to say set var, and I'm going to call this as my sentiment. And here I'm going to leverage my sentiment prompt. So it's going to be of sentiment dot predict. I'll go and open up the bracket. And here we want to actually get the text. So I'm going to use my self property. I'm going to use my self property. I'm going to click on self text, close, close. And so first thing that's gonna happen is whatever text is typed over here, that will be sent to our sentiment prompt and the data that we get, either it's a negative or a positive, that negative or positive value will be stored in our bar sentiment. So that's the first utilization of the sentiment. However, right after that, we are going to go and now apply our second prompt. So for that one, I'm gonna put this if condition in. In this if condition, I'm gonna go and say, if our bar sentiment dot text equals of type negative, and it has to be this capital O and a capital N um, negative, then go ahead and set a new variable, and I'm gonna call this variable as my uh, var response, and over there, let's go ahead and use our second prompt. That second prompt is of type response right over here. It's the response dot predict. I'll go and open this up. It's also going to use the self dot text. Go and close that and go ahead and close that as well. Uh, it needs one more bracket, so I'm going to close it. So over here, the only time we are going to go and provide the text, which is the response one, is if this first response is of type negative. So it's neat because sometimes people might go and put in a ticket and it might have a positive effect to it. For those ones, we do not want to go ahead and put in this predict one because the predict one is very specific saying that, hey, your ticket will be bumped up or escalated. We, we don't want that for positive type descriptions. We only want that for negative type descriptions. Uh, so therefore, we have to put this if condition in. Finally, this var response variable, we want to apply it over here. So for coming back on this text, in this text properties for text over here, um, I'll go ahead and put that in as my var response dot text right over here. 
So right now it's blank because there's nothing over here, but let's go and test it. So I'll first go and click on save. Perfect. Go and click on play. Um, right over here in our app, I'm going to click on new uh, for the title. I'll go and put this in laptop keyboard malfunctioned again. And for the description, I'm going to type in something like this. this is, I am unable to use my laptop again. I am so sick and tired of this low class device this company provides. This could be the main reason I submit my resignation. I mean, if this doesn't come back as negative, I don't know what else will. But just to make sure, I'm going to go and click on outside. As you can see over here, now the AI prompt is generated. And by the way, right over here is where the data showed up. This is the AI prompt that we generated. And as you can see, it shows everything over here, but you also have the beauty to go ahead and tweak it as is. It's perfect because right when the user is in the process of creating the ticket, I mean, we haven't even gone ahead and submitted yet. We are still in the ticket creation process. The AI prompt immediately kicked in thanks to the description only that was put in over here. Uh, so the user can go ahead and now select any accessories as they want or go ahead and click on save. And now because we've got an AI prompt, we can do additional work. We can go ahead and now bump up that escalation of that ticket directly into high, whatever else we want to do, because we've got something to work with. In addition, you've got full access to go ahead and manipulate this AI prompt, however you see fit for yourself. So the last thing that I want to tweak over here is, is the viewing of this text, because right now, if I go and click on any of these other items, the text is still showing up. So I just want to clean that up a little bit. I only want this text to show up when a new entry is put in. And the way I can do that is right over here in my plus new, you see that there is an update context, new mode. That is a local variable that is being used in this main screen one. So I'll actually go and leverage that right over here in the text. I've got the var response.txt, but I'm going to go and put in another if function over here. In the if function, I'm going to say if the new mode equals true, then go ahead and give me the var response text. So that way, if I'm going ahead and actually creating a new item, then go ahead and show that. However, if I just go and click on these other items, I don't want to see that same AI prompt showing up again and again. Also in this new prompt over here for this new, I'm going to go ahead and make sure that that variable to which it is applied by default becomes blank. And here's what I mean. That variable, which is the var response, when you go and click on this plus new, I want to make sure that that variable is set to blank. And this is how you do it. I'll just go and put it in the blank, uh, open the brackets, close the brackets, and then also close the brackets for the variable. Therefore, anytime this is clicked, that response also becomes blank so that the next sentiment can come in using the AI prompts. Now, in conclusion, I want to point out this one important thing. These AI custom prompts that we've created, they do go ahead and use your AI credits. So as I hover over the diamond, it says apps that include the AI models will require available AI credits in order to successfully invoke model functions. So what that means is that you need to go ahead and keep an eye in your Power Platform Admin Center under the resources, capacities. If you scroll a little bit to the bottom, these AI build the credits, you got to keep tabs on how many of them you have and how much of it is already consumed. Because every single time that app is used and we are going and using that AI prompts, you are going and slowly depleting or consuming these AI credits. So keep that in the back of your mind when you're going and using these AI prompts. So it's important to point out that the utilization of the AI prompts has no dependency on what data source you use for the actual Canvas app. Granted, in my case, I actually went and used Dataverse. However, that app could be with SharePoint, that app could be with Azure SQL, heck, it could be with your Excel sitting in your OneDrive. The AI prompt creation is very independent. Yes, it does utilize the AI credits that you have. So that's important but it doesn't really care about what data source the app is using. Also, you can do this for existing apps because that was what we demoed over here. I actually had an existing app and I was able to go ahead and enhance that using my AI prompt. You can also go and do this with brand new apps over here. And, and it's not that it's one AI prompt for one app. You could use that AI prompt for multiple apps. Again, keeping in mind the credit utilization. So hopefully this video was useful to you. Hopefully it starts giving you some ideas on how you can start infusing AI into your apps and start making your apps much more better. Hopefully this video was useful to you. And as always, keep using Power Apps with AI prompts. Hello, hello, hello. So if you like this video, go ahead and click on that subscribe button and smash that like button. Also, if you have a few extra seconds, can you go ahead and put in a comment 
either say something nice or give me ideas for my next video. And until then, see ya.